If this guest and title look a little familiar, it's because this episode originally was released in August of 2023. This is the first time in over two years that I have missed a new Spillover episode, and I do apologize for that, but with an ongoing family emergency, I just wasn't able to film a new interview this week. We are back to normal next week, but I chose my interview with tech wellness founder August Bryce to repost for a few reasons. So if you haven't ever listened to this one yet, I really think you're going to enjoy it, especially if you liked my interview with Hilda Labrada Gore a few weeks ago. August Bryce is a wellness expert on all things tech. She founded the company Tech Wellness to teach people about the dangerous long-term effects of Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and 5G. And this episode has tons of practical tips on how to turn your home into a non-toxic, EMF-free tech haven. She's going to go over the signs that could show you that you or a loved one have electromagnetic sensitivity, or ES. It's a real thing caused by Wi-Fi. And August tells us all the secret places that Bluetooth can hide in your home, where to turn it off, when, how. She discovered that she herself was extremely sensitive to Wi-Fi or EMFs and that it was contributing to a slew of health problems that she was experiencing. She is a leading expert in the space and the why for why she chooses to live this way is completely backed by science. Her website, techwellness.com, is a one-stop shop for tons of products to help you in this area like Wi-Fi kill switches, air tube headphones, super cute blue light blocking glasses, and much more. It's one of my favorite favorite corners of the internet. Every week I interview someone new in the society and culture space who has a jaw-dropping story or riveting expertise on a new subject with the purpose of helping us live counterculturally. It's entertaining, but also educational. If you prefer to watch interviews, you can do that on the Real Alex Clark YouTube channel. Make sure that you're subscribed there, but also here, wherever you listen to podcasts, and then pause right now, leave a five-star review. The more reviews that my show has, the more credible my show looks to exciting potential guests. Next week, I'm going to be interviewing a beloved Christian speaker and author on toxic masculinity and why Christian men in particular seem to be the stereotype that get the brunt of this abuse and why they're even considered toxic and how to combat that. For now, please welcome August Bryce to The Spillover. My audience is very familiar with health and wellness by now. I think I've drilled that into their mind since the beginning of the year. But what does tech wellness mean? Well, tech wellness means being well with technology. And our platform, Tech Wellness, is a collection of information, experts, and solutions to empower people to live balanced and therefore healthier with technology. Now, I tried to kind of explain in my way what EMF is and everything, but what is it and what does that stand for, EMF? That's a, it's a mouthful and a big topic. I'll try to make it really simple to begin with. EMF stands for electromagnetic field. And there's this big spectrum of electromagnetic fields starting way down at the bottom with uh, extremely low frequencies. And by the way, even natural EMF. And it goes all the way up the spectrum to gamma rays and x-rays. So that's electromagnetic fields. But today, when people are talking about EMF, especially in this conversation, we're mostly going to be talking about the wireless variety, which is on the spectrum of EMF. And those are called radio frequencies. And they have some magnetic components that, that, that stuff at the very low end. But radio frequencies are the EMF that power all of our wireless devices. And that means Bluetooth and cell phones, and your Wi-Fi, and your air tags, anything that has a wireless component uses EMF RF waves. So, but people are just calling it EMF because it's simpler, and we're hearing so much about EMF because this wireless variety of EMF has grown exponentially in the last 20 years. Now, here is the question that I want to answer today. Is Wi-Fi basically the new secondhand smoke? Oh, I think you could lump Wi-Fi and cell phone radiation and, uh, you know, cell phone towers all into that that title of secondhand smoke. And I love that you're saying that because I really want the guy next to me in the plane to turn off his computer when I'm sitting next to him and to take that Wi-Fi out of the airplane. You know, yeah, I love that term secondhand smoke as a comparison to Wi-Fi energy. This energy is invisible. You cannot see it or smell it or touch it. Some people, like me, can feel it. And we're called people who have something called electromagnetic hypersensitivity syndrome or electromagnetic sensitivity syndrome or EHS. 
Some people just call it environmental illness, but we are people that have these certain symptoms where we can just feel the energy that's coming from the devices that, like I said, you can't see, smell, or touch. But it's got to be powerful, right? Because it's what allows data on our phone, a whole movie to be downloaded in two seconds. Okay, so there are people that have sensitivity to EMFs. They don't even know it. So a lot of, if you're experiencing a lot of adverse side effects with your health, it could be because of EMF sensitivity. What do Uh, those, what do those sensitivities look like? Okay, for me, and this is how I knew immediately that I had the sensitivity. First time I picked up a cell phone, I could actually feel the energy of the phone. And to me, it, it, it's on video because it was a Christmas present over 35 years, 34 years ago. And I put the phone up to my head and I, I like this because I felt the tingling. I felt a thickness that like went into my head. And I was like, wow, what is that? And it took years and years and years to figure it out. But I know for a fact that if I'm sitting near a Wi-Fi, I will get a really amazing headache. And I don't get headaches. And so it's super easy for me to understand when I've got exposure, common exposure symptoms for a lot of people. And I've got I've got a list. Do you want me to read yes, it? Yes, read the uh, list. Oh my gosh, yes. You know what's really great about this list is on our website, I have a whole story about electromagnetic sensitivity because it's me. And I and I'd gone to a conference in London. I interviewed a lot of different people who have it and how they got it. But I've got all these different symptoms. And each symptom has studies that verify that people have been in research studies that have noted these particular uh, symptoms. So now wait, so is your is you being personally sensitive to EMFs. Is that how you got into this whole like business of talking about tech wellness in the first place? 1000%. That's that's this that's exactly why because I didn't have the ability physically to embrace the technology of my cell phone. I was fortunate I could always use my computer plugged in to the internet just like I'm using it now. But as far as like letting my cell phone become an appendage and buying everything, you know, through my cell phone and working off my cell phone, that didn't happen to me. So I was able to see the other issues that are part of tech wellness and what we call the tech toxins, like cybersecurity issues and privacy issues and blue light and then, you know, obsessions and addictions with our phones. And so that's why we cover all of those things under the umbrella of tech toxins on tech wellness. But it all came from this amazing sensitivity, this search for why this was happening to me and what I could do about it. And that culminated in a website to share with others so that people will understand that there are some risks. And and just by, by protecting ourselves and being mindful and aware, we can live better and healthier. Well, you know, August, there are going to be people that are like, what is this voodoo mama juju saying that (laughs) Wi-Fi is like secondhand smoke? They're going to think that we're full of full of crap, essentially. Well, and that's interesting because, yes, except research. And when I first started talking about this and thinking about it and searching, searching for help for myself, I found these what I carry now, these air tube headsets, and they stop the radiation from coming up to your ear. And in the process of working with the manufacturer, the person who, who held the patent, I heard this name, George Carlo. And I thought, oh, wait, I, I've seen his book. And he was the first person that really enlightened me and the world way back in 2002. He wrote a book called Cell Phones, Invisible Hazards of the Wireless Age, where he details the first really big research study done, by the way, by the Wireless Phone Industry Association called the CTIA. And he was hired to run the study. Uh, Towards the end of the study, they were researching rats and mice and exposing them to cell phone radiation. He found out that things weren't going well and they were seeing tumors and cancers. And he wrote a letter to all the big industry people at the time. There's a copy of the letter from AT&T on our website and in his book. And he says, you know, we, we, we're not taking the precautions that we should be. We need to slow this thing down. And he was fired. And What? Was, oh, yeah. I mean, that yeah. seems kind of like a cover-up to make sure people didn't know the, how bad Wi-Fi could really be for our health. 
And yeah, because Wi-Fi and cell problem radiation, it was all the same back then. There wasn't Wi-Fi. But uh, when he was doing the the first research study, yeah. And so it's all in his book. And uh, anyway, I, I, ca- I called him and I said, hey, you know, I know what you're talking about. I get it. I can feel it. And he said, well, it's not like you're magic. It's not like you're special. You're just sensitive to it. Something in your body. And it turns out that most people who end up having this sensitivity, that something in their body is some autoimmune issue, some trauma to the body that caused the sensitivity, just like sensitivity. Some people have sensitivity to smoke, some to chemicals, some to everything. It's part of the toxic load, but also our bodies just, you know, weren't able to accommodate this particular toxin. I believe in adaptation, by the way. I believe that we can do things to fortify ourselves and protect ourselves from most of the toxins. I wish that they would all go away. I wish that this would be seen like secondhand smoke like you're talking about. And eventually, it probably will be. But uh, anyway, I hope that I just answered your question. No, I'm absolutely. We're talking. Absolutely. Let's go through all the symptoms that you might have if you're sensitive to Wi-Fi. Okay. Every single one of these has research to back it. Headaches, lack of appetite, digestion problems, anxiety, sleep difficulties, unstable moods, bursts of anger due to poor sleep, depression, fatigue, lack of concentration, irritability, memory problems, visual problems, vertigo or dizziness, tinnitus. This is the one that I hear about most, tinnitus from from my community and then insomnia, Uh, abdominal swelling, burning pain in your hand, shoulders, legs, and feet. That's a symptom that I manifest frequently when I am in an environment that has a 5G tower, an airport, an airplane. That's my big symptom. Uh, Itching, edema, swelling, chills, photosensitivity, uh, heart palpitations, difficulty breathing, cystitis, skin rashes, skin rashes, heightened sensitivity to touch, smells, chemicals, light, and noise. That's a big list. You know what is coming? What's coming to mind for me, August, is well, I feel like we're going to look back on EMFs like we do on birth control now, like essentially mm-hmm. knowing that we were poisoning ourselves. Uh, well, it's amazing. I think you're right, but. I think it's going to take either a lot of talking with our wallets or, uh, you know, there's been amazing investigative reports. I just have been involved with this for so long. I am so surprised that we're still where we are. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that you're talking about it because that's going to enlighten even more. But like I said, we have thousands of research studies, really good, double-blind, peer-reviewed, published research studies that show a link between this invisible radiation and a health effect from infertility, from uh, changes to our sperm count and the motility and viability of sperm to uh, increasing miscarriages to babies that are, have been exposed or mice babies. This was done by uh, Hugh Taylor, uh, uh, Yale University head of reproductive sciences there, did this great research where he exposed baby mice or Uh, pregnant mice to cell phone radiation, then followed the babies through their lifespan, and they showed ADHD-like behaviors and changes in their brain. Now, this is a published study. Dr. Taylor talks about this study. How many women are aware of this study? Now, here's a crazy thing, but do Uh you think that we almost need black box labels on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth-capable products? For sure. In fact, there is a black box label in your phone. (gasps) And there's probably one on your computer. And uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. If you look, it's required actually by the FCC. And um, I can read it to you. But uh, Berkeley attempted to have this warning label put in cell phone stores in Berkeley. And it had to be up. by by all the cell phone displays and in the window. And they succeeded. They the cell phone industry took them to court. This was like in 2014, 15, 16, took them to court. They appealed it. They won. And then the cell phone industry took them to court again. And they lost <gasps> because the judge said that it was over warning. 
that over warning, over warning, because it was already in your phone. In the in the manual, meaning now, it's oh, it's too noticeable. We don't want the warning to be that visible. We need to hide it somewhere else. I think that's exactly what they were saying. That's a very good point. Is it true that thyroid health can be affected by EMF exposure? Oh, absolutely. There are two or three studies that I have on our website that point to uh, an increase, and I'm not sure if it's you know uh, it's not an issue that I personally have, but it's. A, an increase in T3 or T4, a decrease. Anyway, it's it's it absolutely changes thyroid function. The exposure does. And you know, Alex, we have to know that not 100% of the time for 100% of the people, just like 100% of the people that smoked didn't get lung cancer or emphysema. Right. But enough, there, there was, and it started with the, the same way with the tobacco industry. There was the pushback. There were the questions. You know, there there were so many things that were misleading. And now we know today that wouldn't it have been great to have had this term caveat enter, buyer beware. And that's what I'm hoping people get the message of today. Just be aware, be cautious. And they actually, there's something called the precautionary principle. And until we know for absolutely sure that they're safe, and I think I know for sure that they're not safe, and I know that there hasn't been a safe level of exposure that has been proven. So for me, it's a really easy thing to adapt into my life, of course, because I can feel it. And secondly, it's easy for me to talk about because that I know that it's so true with all this research backing it up. Oh, and by the way, when the cell phone industry funds a study, the results are different. More times than not. Well, I'm not shocked about that at all, August, because I'm thinking of, oh, big pharma and all these other things we know are corrupt. They have a business interest in Uh keeping things hidden or saying like, oh, well, the results show this. Well, how come they're completely different than what someone else finds? One of my sweet best friends I visited recently told me that pretty much every recommendation that I have ever made, like a paid ad or not, she has purchased and that I'm the only person she trusts to give recommendations. First of all, I was so touched and honored. I'm like, oh my gosh, that meant so much. From her water purifying system to her body wash, she has tried all my favorites and she could not stop raving about Olivia's organic prebiotic body wash. The only thing she said that she is going to change is picking a scented one next time because she got the unscented one and after smelling mine she wishes that she would have opted for the honeysuckle green tea wash which is my favorite scent from Olivia or really anyone ever. I never go for floral scents. I usually don't like them but there is something special about this honeysuckle green tea from Olivia that feels different. I'm sure that not being made with anything artificial makes a difference. Olivia organic prebiotic body wash is in my opinion the best non-toxic body cleanser out there. Other non-toxic washes that I've tried seem to burn my nether regions. They don't spread around easily on my skin. They leave a weird residue. I am honestly telling you the truth that Olivia is the best that I've ever tried. And I'm so impressed by their limited amount of organic ingredients that feed the skin's microbiome, which really speed up the skin's ability to heal from blemishes, eczema, psoriasis, scarring, fine lines, and more. It can be used as a shampoo or a face wash too if you're really dry, and I can't recommend the hand wash more. We often forget about our hands when it comes to slowing down the signs of aging. Our hands show our age as much as our face. I have Olivia hand wash in the kitchen and the bathroom. Try Olivia at Olivia.com and get 15% off with code Alex15. That's Olivia.com with code Alex15 for 15% off or find all this in the description below. Right, exactly. And you know, it's even harder with these because these little guys, they're so convenient, right? I mean, they're so easy. And I think people actually feel even parents feel like they're a birthright of their children now that they should have one. And so a cell this phone. one, yes, a cell phone. And because, you know, we can still be online. We can still go on the internet without any radiation exposure from wireless energy. We can okay, do that right so now. So here's the thing. When I found out how 
absolutely messed up the Wi-Fi radiation was. I was like, oh, every single night before I go to bed now, I'm going to do a hard shut off of my modem for my internet. Then I found out from following you, don't get near your modem. Don't physically bend down and touch it and be close to it. So now I'm like, wait, so we need to be shutting off our Wi-Fi at night when we sleep. I'm sorry. That's okay. Explain why we need to be shutting our Wi-Fi off before we go to bed and then how to do it so we're not getting close to it and why we shouldn't get physically near it. Okay, so your rest is reserved for your body's rejuvenation. This energy is fighting with your rest. This wonderful woman did this study just on Wi-Fi and cell phone radiation, and she found out that it's not just the blue light that blocks the melatonin, but the radiation itself. So, of course, that's going to interfere with sleep. And she also found brain changes because of this radiation exposure. So the idea is to get your own environment, any place that you can control as free from this toxin as possible, especially when you sleep. So at night, before you go to bed, or just when you decide to stop using it or any time during the day, I have a lot of moms who use it for their children while they nap and find that they nap so much better. You just take a little switch. This is the one that I have. And you press the remote because at, you don't want to get close to it because at those antennas, you're getting the largest dose of that Wi-Fi radiation that you can possibly be exposed to because it's radiating from those antennas and it's radiating like a fog throughout your home. So the closer you get to it, the greater your exposure. So that's why my husband actually developed the remote for me because- And you that, sell this. You sell this on your website, the remote system yeah, to just turn yeah, on and off your Wi-Fi right, throughout your right. entire home very easily, correct? Call it my Wi-Fi kill switch. And it's so funny because my husband did this uh, 17 years ago. He knew that I was sensitive. He did not tell me. We did not have a Wi-Fi in the house. And all of a sudden, there was, I was in the TV room and there were like three or four days I was in the, and I got this amazing headache. And he goes, hey, babe, come watch a show. I said, can't go in there. Something's wrong. I don't know what's happening in that room. I think there's a problem. There's like, I, I thought it was chemicals. There's some chemical or something in there. And he said, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I thought you wouldn't notice. I put a Wi-Fi behind the TV. <gasps> you I really know. are sensitive. <laughs> That's like a superpower. <laughs> That's what I felt like. It was magic. I, when my kids were at this age, they were like preteen. I could tell if they were up or using the Wi-Fi because I would wake up. So, so my husband put this remote switch on the Wi-Fi so any time I wanted, I could turn it off, which was all the time. And so basically, it was any time they had to have it, they would turn it on. And then, of course, we moved to a home that we built and we rewired our, we wired our entire home. I had this completely lovely non-EMF environment. Now, see, just- this is something for people that are listening who may be building a home or something. Mm-hmm. There are ways to build your home so so the, I don't know, the Wi-Fi radiation is is less potent or something, right? Could you explain Actually, that? Actually, it's, it's to use, like right now, I don't have a Wi-Fi in this house. I don't use Wi-Fi. Everything's hardwired? Everything is hardwired. My phone right now, this is hardwired. I can oh use my gosh. this phone, right? That's an adapter. This if you are watching this adapter? on the YouTube channel, you can <laughs> see what August is showing. I mean, her her phone, her cell phone is plugged in hard to the internet Wi-Fi or the internet, I don't it know, is. of her house. And this is the Ethernet cable. Okay. And so some people would say, oh my gosh, that's not very clean. That's so clunky. And to me, it's so healthy. I look at my wires and I'm so happy because I know that I have no exposure. And so this is how it all started. This is how we all got internet to begin with was through an ethernet cable. Yeah. And so that's why we all had a computer room in our house. That's where your computer was hooked up. <laughs> that, and isn't that true, right? Yeah. And we usually only had one outlet. So you can design your home to have five outlets in every room if you want to. And I really advise that. That way the wires don't have to cross over each other uh, because up until this point, we haven't developed anything but the wires. And so the wires are still wires and uh, they do take up space and they do get in the way. So you want to roll them up when you're not using them. But I have no Wi-Fi and I communicate beautifully with everyone. I use an app called Signal, which I love because it's private as well and encrypted. And I do my chats, my video chats, my phone calls using that. On my computer, it's no different at all. I can do everything on my computer that I've always done, hardwired, without a Wi-Fi. And then you turn off the Bluetooth, 
from your computer and you disable the Wi-Fi from your computer and your computer is free from all wireless radiation. Okay, so what EMF protections actually work that we should be spending our money on and investing in? Okay. Okay. My favorite EMF protection is what we just talked about. That's number one. Then there's an EMF protection called the Pyridae, and that's a complete block of EMF. The problem with blocking EMF completely, and by the way, I have a beautiful Pyridae bag that I use, and I love them, and I recommend that everyone carry them because it also hides your GPS signal, but you will get no signal in and no signal out of your Faraday. So it's ultimate safety for your privacy and your well-being. However, the only way that you can get signal is if your antenna is free. <laughs> it's free to get the signal. And the negative part of what's called partial shielding, and you've seen those phone cases, you know, that cover your phone but they're still opened and they say they block EMF. Well, the material they use blocks EMF, but the phone case could not block EMF completely and still allow you to get a call or to get a Wi-Fi signal or to get a Bluetooth signal. And so while it works, it also comes with big risks. And those risks are that at the opening, because that phone that antenna is working so hard, Help me, help me get signal. It's reaching out with all the power it has to get signal. It's increasing your exposure wherever there's an opening to far more, most likely, than you would be exposed to if you didn't have the case on at all. So, okay, so people are, 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 I know that people are wondering, well, what if I just turn off my Wi-Fi on my phone and it's sitting on my nightstand? If I just turn off the Wi-Fi button, then then am I good? Do I really have to go and turn off the whole Wi-Fi to my house? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. This, your, worst, your worst exposure is the one right next to you, always. Very good point, Alex. And I love that you brought this up because I do recommend turning off anything you're not using on your phone anyway. If you're not using Wi-Fi, turn it off. If you're not using Bluetooth, turn it off. If you're not using the cell phone uh, signal, turn it off. Each exposure is just one more exposure that's adding to your intake. And this is cumulative. It's a radio frequency. It's part of the EMF uh, frequency spectrum like sunlight. So it's cumulative. So the less we can be exposed to, the better off we're going to be, all of us. And so if you have an extra bed and you have it on airplane mode, you're not going to get any wireless radiation. All you can use, still use it as a clock. You can still download a podcast and listen to you even while you're on complete airplane mode, which is great. Um, so as far as getting cell phone, Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth signal, no, you would not be able to do that with it next to your bed on airplane mode. I do understand that. This is what freaked me out. You. Hello. You posted that there are so many hidden sources of EMFs in our home that you discovered your freaking washing machine was giving yeah. off EMFs and had Bluetooth capabilities or something. Where are all of these hidden areas in our houses? It's so crazy, Alex. And I did. And I, I look at this is what I do. Right. This is my life is is really helping people avoid EMF and helping avoid the toxins. And I get a new washer and dryer. And I get it because the other ones break down. I go to Costco, get the exact same ones I had before. They fit right up on the little pedestals, you know, and I'm doing laundry. I actually love to do laundry. And I'm getting these major headaches like three days in a row. I'm like, okay, something's wrong. And then it occurred to me, oh my gosh, there's there's a, a cell phone down here. Somebody left a cell phone here. So I take my meter and I go down into the laundry room and no, it was not a cell phone. There were two Wi-Fis, one inside the washer, one inside the dryer. Why and does a washing machine need Wi-Fi? It's why, such a did good they, question. why did they even put that there? So that you can control it from your phone. Control LG. what? Like start the dryer? I don't even understand exactly. that. Turn off the dryer. See when your load is finished, right? It's just getting to the point of being so ridiculous. It's called the Internet of Things. I don't agree with it at all. I think it's such overkill, but it's an option that I wish I was able to turn off. I tried so hard to turn it off. I got in touch with the company. They said, oh, sure, just do this. No, it, the, the signal was verified by this meter and it never went away until I hired somebody to 
open up the washer and dryer and I got my meter and we found the antennas and we disconnected them. Oh my gosh. Now this is this is uh, uh, something I know people are gonna wonder. Is it worth <laughs> it to hire somebody to come out and check your home for EMF exposure or is it totally something that you and your husband or you yourself can just do on your own? For me, since I've done this for so long, absolutely. I can easily go anywhere. I take my meters to the hotel rooms and I disconnect things. Uh, I would say, you know, it's, I love my building biologists, consultants. They are amazing. At the same time, they come to check your EMF. They can check your air quality and your mold. So that's great. But if I was on a budget and I was concerned about this at all, I would get a meter. And I would get a meter not just for the wireless energy, but that would be my top one if I can only have one. Or I would get two meters, one that would help me see the invisible magnetic and electric energy, which honestly, it comes just from your outlets and it's different. It's not as studied as the wireless, but for a lot of people who are sensitive, it's a concern. And you know what you do about that? You get away from it. And that's the problem with the wireless energy. We just were surrounded by it. But the electrical current in our homes, typically we can pull our bed a foot away from the outlet and we are far enough away from it that the energy has dissipated. Like I said, it's like a cigarette and at the very core of the cigarette, that's where the antenna is. And as that smoke comes out, it, it thick and then it gets less and less and less as it travels across the room. That's how it is with wireless energy. The further you are from it, the less you're exposed to. So that's why I think a, a wireless meter is your number one buy. Where do you get and that? Then we offer them on Cal Glenless and uh, you can look up EMF meter. I've chosen the ones that I like best that have worked best for me, please don't get a cheap one on Amazon. If you have one, throw it away because they're not certified and they they haven't even been calibrated. Back when I first bought meters, I would send them to an engineer to be calibrated. Now, most of the good meters come calibrated. So they're certified to work, they're accurate, they're calibrated, all the meters that I offer. And I do offer a tri-field meter that can measure all three of those different types of energies that I was just talking about. Uh, but it doesn't it, it doesn't give you the super accurate RF measurement, but it lets you know that it's there. It can help you find the hidden stuff. And so you can walk around your house and go, whoa, whoa, my vacuum cleaner has wireless? I had no oh idea. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? And you're oh, taking yeah, these yeah. meters to even your, your hotel rooms and stuff when you uh -huh. travel too, right? You should take this everywhere you go. I do. I mean, I do because it's so important to me. And like I said, I, I don't want to be at dinner and, and start feeling badly. And so I have my meter. I have a very small, portable one. It's it's so awesome. Just about this big. And I, I take it to restaurants and I decide where I'm going to sit. Now, and what, oh, sorry, go ahead. It, I just look for the lowest exposure in the room. And of course, there's no, there's very rarely going to be a completely safe exposure in any public place anymore. But I do find the safest place for me. What is the deal with replacing the light bulbs on your end table uh, lamps in your bedroom with red ones? Well, okay, that's more of a, a color temperature thing. That's not going to change the EMF, except what, yeah, light is an EMF. So and in that sense, it will. But all of these LEDs that we've been required to use now, a federal requirement, right, um, which I'm not in love with, and I think a lot of people feel the same, but apparently they're energy saving. They are the hottest, bluest light of the spectrum. And so there are certain things that you can do. You can change that color temperature. And so that's what we're talking about. Replace it with a warm color temperature that doesn't have that excruciatingly painful, ugly, white, white, blue light. And that's good and for trying to get in the mode to sleep better. That's yeah, why your end table lamps, you should switch out those bulbs to be red. But you think the light bulbs in our house, all of those should be changed out anyway? Regular light bulbs? Well, well there are there are certain things. And you should need to get a really good quality one because the problem with LEDs, and I'm thinking that most people are getting LEDs now, uh, they have this flicker. And some of the flicker is imperceptible, but there's the flicker that you can really see. And even though you can't see it, your brain can see that imperceptible flicker and that can cause neurological issues and anxiety. And so if you can make sure you have a good quality light with good quality drivers or power, like you never want to try to dim one of these lights because as you dim them, you take their power away and that's when the flicker start. And here's a tip too for your screen. 
try to use your screen full power because you will receive less of the pulsating light and have less of the flicker because what's happening behind the screen is it's fighting for the power too. And so it it's having irregular power and that can cause a flicker that either you see or you don't see, but it can make you tired. And so if you turn your brightness up all the way, you're giving your, your computer full power. And then to deal with that blue light, you can use a software that's free like Flux, or you can get a screen cover that either is has an amber tone to block that blue light or somehow dims the blue light. And we offer those too, and people just love them. They feel better looking at their screens. And blue light glasses, you think that's not a scam? That's a real thing you should get? Oh my goodness. So not a scam. It, yes. As a matter of fact, these, these that I had on earlier, these block, and all clear glasses only block a bit, 35 to 45%. So these kinds of glasses that just block a bit of the blue light, I'm using now inside because we're just getting, just like the radiation, we have such an intense amount of blue light around us now. And now blue light is not bad. Let's get that, let's get, just get that on the table right away. Blue light the kind that comes from the sun, this kind that we're exposed to the minute that the, the sun rises, that's blue light, that's so good for our bodies at the right time. Mm. In fact, we hear about melatonin, right? We hear it helps us produce melatonin. It helps us produce good hormones. It helps us focus. So blue light at the right time is beautiful and so good for our body and for our eyes. The problem with too much blue light is that, can you imagine, and I like it, just go outside, stare at the sky. Can you imagine just staring at a bright blue sky for eight or nine or 10 hours? No. That's what we're doing. Oh, you're we so are, right. Right? Yeah. So that, and so as far as the blue light blockers, I love my orange glasses. I have these really like, I don't know, like orange glasses, you know, <laughs> that wrap around because yes. for me, it comes from here. It comes from here. It comes from here. So I want to be protected from as much of the blue light as possible at the right time, which is sunset. If we can, you know, just vibe with the natural rhythm of the universe, you know, the sunrise and the sunset. So sunset means no blue light. And so around your home, candlelight doesn't have blue light. Jim I brought this up. I brought this up in my Dr. Courtney Kayla episode. I said to her, and she did not know what I was talking about, which is funny because she knows everything, but that was the first she'd heard of it. I said, I said, Courtney, there are people who are turning off all of the lights in their house at a certain time and only using candles. And I said, are you doing that yet? She's like, that's the first I've heard of that. But yeah. you're bringing it up. I, I am not crazy. That is something people are doing now. You know, I hear from a lot of moms and the reason that they're doing it is because they just want the most natural, healthiest environment for their children. And so they're hitting something called the EMF whole house kill switch, where they attach to your circuit breakers the ability to turn off all the power in your home. And so that means zero electricity. Maybe they reserve some for the hallway or, you know, maybe the parents' bedrooms. But this way, their kids will have zero EMF exposure. And that, that's a trend. And for me, I haven't done that, haven't needed to, or actually wanted to, and I love the candlelight. And I Here's love Here's what I'm saying. I August, we are going to make it a thing where women are going to be walking around like Winnie the Pooh in his little nightcap and his nightgown with his little candle. <laughs> That's the vibe. <laughs> They're going to be so healthy <laughs> and feel so good. Well, one thing for sure, it's going to help their sleep. Yes. Because they're just... Like, what else are you going to do in the candlelight, right? <laughs> okay, so let's Not talk tradition. Let's talk fitness tracking devices. Apple Watch versus Aura Ring, which is better? Well, actually, uh, you know, the Apple Watch can go on airplane mode and it can take your data. And the Aura Ring can go on airplane mode and it can take your data. However, the Apple Watch seems to somehow, I've been measuring it. I, I bought one to try and see, well, what's the real deal with this? And by the way, the magnetic EMF, and there's a lot, there's a one sentinel study on magnetic EMF that I'll touch on in a second, but the magnetic EMF on an Apple Watch never stops, airplane mode or not. And then also the screen is lit. 
And so that gives you a blue light exposure and I'll probably also some of that magnetic EMF. The Oura Ring doesn't have either. The new generation Oura Ring, unfortunately, does have some light that flash all night that really bug a lot of people. And I don't recommend that. I had an old Oura Ring and it was fabulous, but they both have to be turned on and synced with your phone in order to get the data. So I opt for a non wire wireless fitness tracker and it gives me very little information but it's enough for me what is it that you're using i'm using i I, i'll link it i found one on amazon that that uh links my steps so it does my steps it reminds me to drink water uh and really and tells me the time and that's about it and how long i've been exercising and now i have had now apple watch and aura ring experience and i know the incredible amount of data i think that's good for a short period of time. I think it's nice to get like a benchmark of, of and maybe point out something that maybe you can work on. But I think that self, and it's it's more than reflection. It, it becomes like a self obsession. Honestly, is just too much for an for a balanced life. I I don't think they bring balance to life at all. Is and it they're m- so disruptive? Yes. Is it more dangerous to use your phone while it's charging? Uh, of course, it is much more dangerous to use it while it's charging because the way it charges is via electricity. And those electric fields are screaming as your phone is being charged. So please, that's probably the ultimately worst time to use your phone is while it's charging. There, There's this great thing that my friend Sean Cranish developed that where he takes um, a regular USB outlet and grounds it so that there's no electrical current coming from it, which is awesome. And so you're not exposed to any of that, but that's a very special connection. I'm hoping to see many more of those. Uh, His comes right now in a, um, I'm I'm using one right now, it comes with outlets as well to electricity, but that's, it's, it's an amazing benefit. And by the way, it used to be that all of the original Apple products came grounded. But now they don't anymore. Mm -hmm. Of course. The original chargers were really good. So I was reading this book by a guy who calls himself a holistic plastic surgeon. You're like, what the heck is even that? I mean, I had the same first initial reaction. But I think he says that because he wants to try to get patients to see results with other things before opting for surgery, which I think is really admirable. He wants surgery to be a last resort. So in this book, he gives so many great tips on what treatments he does or doesn't recommend, even diet tips for your best skin. He gives so many great tips on what treatments he does or doesn't recommend, and even diet tips for your best skin ever. So he has this whole section, kid you not, on how grass-fed beef. Specifically, grass-fed beef helps improve the collagen in your skin and face, reducing the signs of aging. So what I am saying is there is scientific proof that the more Good Ranchers grass-fed steak you eat, the younger you'll look. It has to do with what animals eat and then what that does to your body. Conventionally raised meat, which is what you find in fast and frozen food, is literally making you age faster and worse. And another bone that I need to pick just as a sidebar because I listen to a lot of podcasts. I am a podcast er and listener. I cannot with these health and wellness podcasters that I listen to recommending meat subscription boxes that don't even feature meat raised in the US. This is imported meat packaged in America, but they're raised in totally different countries. That means completely different rules about what can go in those animals feeds and all sorts of other problems, including um, not supporting small farmers and ranchers in the US, ones that are committed to not pumping animals full of vaccines share our conservative values. Right now in the month of January, Good Ranchers is prepared to give you free chicken, pasture-raised chicken for a year with new box subscriptions. That is $189 worth of pasture-raised pre-trimmed chicken breasts for free for a year in addition to your Good Ranchers subscription. Go to GoodRanchers.com, use code Clark for $20 off, plus free pasture-raised chicken for a year. That is GoodRanchers.com with code Clark for $20 off and free pasture-raised chicken for a year. Find it in the show notes. Good Ranchers, American Meat Delivered. Now, is EMF protective clothing like a gimmick or does that actually work? Now, you know, this is very interesting because just like 
I was explaining that the material that's used in those cases definitely blocks the EMF. So any metallic material will reflect these electric invisible energies away. And so this metallic material does reflect this invisible energy that's coming at you from wherever your body is protected. If this was an EMF protective shirt, I'd be protected here. I'd be protected here. I would not have any EMF exposure. However, that reflection, and I have a video where I demonstrate this, it has to go somewhere. Mm. It will reflect back out. And as it does, it can pull, it can bounce against other things that are metal in your home corners, and it can actually grow. It can it can grow in exposure. And that exposure, where is it going to go? To my thyroid, to my nose, to my brain, to my ears, to my head, to my hands, to anything that's not covered. So that makes sense. It's not without risk. Now, I also want to bring up that this isn't like something that the uh, American health and wellness community all of a sudden is like, ooh, Wi-Fi is bad. Other countries are taking uh, precautions against EMF exposure, correct? Oh, and so much better than us. Yeah. So what are they better. doing? Well, the, in France, there's no, th- there are no phones allowed at school. I think that it started out that it was 12, and then I think it went up to 14. So they don't even want any exposure at school. They don't want Wi-Fis in schools. They're, they're taking steps to eliminate all cell phone radiation exposure and Wi-Fi radiation exposure from kids' classrooms. And I would love to see that happen here. There is one great organization here that's trying to get that, you know, enlightenment brought to schools. And instead, what do we do here? We give the perfect- them tablets. Yes. We give them a tablet. It just breaks my heart. It just, it's wild because if we are giving them tablets and they have to have a computer in the school, then download lesson plans, download homework, download uh, the, the videos that you want them to watch and mandatory no power during or no uh, Wi Fi, no Bluetooth, no cell phone radiation ever on those things while the kids are using them. I mean, that's, that would be easy and not a huge change from what we're doing now. Just a more regulated and controlled and balanced way to use them. How dangerous is it for a man to carry a cell phone in his front pocket? Well, there's two reasons why he shouldn't. One, because of the heat of the phone, and the other, because of the invisible radiation. So Dr. Huberman came out and said that, you know, he's working into EMF and I'm so happy that he is. But he said, you know, he wasn't sure whether it was the radiation or the heating effect and to make sure that he didn't put it because it absolutely was affecting sperm health and sperm quality and the number of sperm. So that's why a man never wants to do that. And so then you can also go even further and think about what prostate cancer, you know, or prostate issues. So yeah, you don't want to have it there. And you don't want to have it in the back pocket either because that's where we generate our blood supply, right? That's the biggest bone of our body. So... Um, to me, you just don't want to have that on. You don't want it in your bra. But so that's why I think it's very dangerous for men. And there was a study done in China where they they took the cell phone out of it and they just exposed men to sitting near a Wi Fi. What the did same they find? Thing happened. Same thing happened with sperm count <gasps> and sperm quality. Yes. Okay. Same now he, now here's what I heard. Is this correct or not? What I heard is that EMF exposure can affect, or sorry. What I heard is that EMF exposure can deplete vitamin B6. And is it true that higher B6 levels in women uh, mean increased fertility, lower likelihood of miscarriage? And so EMF exposure is is contributing to possibly miscarriages and fertility issues oh, in women. There's an amazing study done by Kaiser Permanente of thousands of women that they followed through their pregnancy, and they even put meters on their their abdomen. They wore digital belts. And then they also self-reported what they were being exposed to. And the amazing percentage of increase of those who had the more radiation increase they had, the more miscarriages. And then they also followed, uh, in a separate study, they followed babies who'd been exposed. And there were more uh, uh, mental health issues for those children absolutely as they, grew, as they grew up yeah 
There's so many reasons. There's a, there's so much I'm sure that we could research and find find even more connections. But we do know one way, one mechanism of harm is coming through cell and not cell phone, but cells, the cells in our bodies, cell dysregulation and cell death. Because we're, you know, we're electrical beings and our cells are little electrical uh, circuits inside of our bodies. And so they're finding that they're not opening and closing like they're supposed to and letting all this calcium into the channels, into the cells where they shouldn't be. And so they call this cell dysregulation. This, this has been shown in research report after research report after research report. And uh, a scientist named Martin Paul put all the reports together and brought this to the attention. And what happens with this is it causes a cascade of oxidative stress. And we know all of the different things that oxidative stress can lead to, namely cancer. So there's so many reasons, I think, just so many practical reasons and so many scientific reasons that we should be avoiding the exposure at every turn, whenever we can. And I know it's impossible to avoid all of it, mm-hmm. but as much as we possibly can. And like I said, especially, you know, you're pregnant, you're growing a baby, be ultra, ultra careful like you are with your food and your emotional stress. You know, it's just like, this is the time. And while we sleep is such, in, in our homes, we need to be safe in our homes because right now we really can't control what's happening outside our homes. What is the 2020-20 rule that you promote and talk about? It means that right now we should stop and take, because it's been 20 minutes, we should take 20 seconds and look at least 20 feet away so that our eyes can avoid eye strain. This is just Ooh. another one of the, the toxic effects of tech, right? It's this eye strain that we're all feeling and these headaches just from looking at our screens too long and not taking breaks. I actually like to go 2022 and take two minutes off and stretch and move and, you know, just think of some happy thoughts just to refocus and think about what I've been doing for 20 minutes online. And this has been a really good 20 minutes for me. It's been such a good 20 minutes for me. I, I think it's been like 40. But okay. um, we I have a couple more things that are huge sure. that you talk about that I have never had a guest talk on and that is 5G exposure. What what is 5G exposure? I don't even know what 5G is. I'm uh, genuinely. I know this is another complicated one. I'll try to make it really really simple. But 5G actually so we had the 1G, you know, and that started out in 1983 and G stands for generation. So our phone started in the 80s with 1G and then I think it's in the 90s we we popped into 2G and then 3G was the late 90s and then 4G was in the 2000s and every single time we got a better generation, we got more speed. There was more things we could do on our cell phone. We got better connection. And so as this happened, uh, they, the industry wanted more. They wanted us to have more connectivity because they started thinking about the Internet of Things. And in those first days, it was just communication with each other. But then they wanted communication with things like the oven and the washer and the dryer and the refrigerator, <laughs> really, and the Nest security system. Uh, so... In order to do that, they realized they were going to have to open up more of the spectrum. And in 2016, the FCC made a big announcement. They were opening up this part of the spectrum that was higher than any other of the spectrum that had already been utilized for cell phone communication. Remember how I told you there was this big, long spectrum? Well, the waves at the bottom of the spectrum are longer, okay? And then as the waves get to the higher part of the spectrum, they get shorter. They go more like this. And so those shorter waves travel shorter distances. I'm getting to the point. So now that we're up in the high part of the the spectrum and it's anything over, I think, like 24 gigahertz and it goes all the way up to 100 gigahertz. So that part of the spectrum is a new wave called the millimeter wave. And the problem with that, they knew immediately that you had to see that antenna and it had to be close in order for that antenna to get to your computer. So they said, well, prepare every block or so. They're going to put up those towers. That's it. And they hide them. They look like trees or something. It gave permission. Okay, so so would you, I mean, would, would you ever consider buying a house if you knew that it was close to a 5G tower? Absolutely not, because that's where the source is strongest. And the worst part about these 
the worst thing is this really gave permission to the industry and uh, the government to tell cities, you cannot decide if you get a tower or not. They're coming in and they attach to them small cells. Now, small cells are boosters or Wi-Fi's or even little mini cell antennas, but they're not miniature. They're just as powerful because they're so close to you. So it's not just that millimeter wave, which by the way, has not been studied adequately at all. In fact, we can't even right now at this very moment tell if we're being exposed to it. We're being microwaved. Of- we're being microwaved and we don't even know. Uh, well, it's, uh, you know, it's a different part of the spectrum. But yes, there are radio frequencies that we have not been exposed to, except when you walk through this, the uh, airport security, that's a millimeter wave. And we know that it it affects us differently. But like I said, we're not sure. It hasn't been studied enough. The, the industry did one small study and said, hey, it's good to go. But the more that we have it in our our devices, and by the way, if you have an iPhone 12, or if you have a new Android phone or anything past an iPhone 12, you have one of these millimeter wave antennas built right into your phone. So then what should we be doing? Like, is there a a certain uh, type of cell phone, smartphone that we should be using only? Well, I say don't get anything past 11 for me, because then I won't at least be exposed to that new millimeter wave that hasn't been tested. I just feel like they stop working. Like Apple makes it so that after two years, your phone just starts having all these issues so that you will get a new one. You don't have that problem? Kind of feels that way, doesn't it? No, I I start to feel like I have that problem. But I think as long as Apple is selling the refurbished 11s, that they're going to back them and they're still going to work. But I know what you're talking about. I hear it from people all the time, but not with the 11 yet. Okay. And um, then I think that maybe eventually we'll go to like the Medita phone or the Light phone. They just have the capability of only texting and talking. I mean, that's extreme, but that's also an option. But as far as keeping your phone safe, like I said, turn off as many functions as possible. But this millimeter wave, they say that we're able to turn it off on an iPhone. But until we find a meter that we can use, I mean, I'm sure that the you know cell phone industry has the meters that show if they're working. But as far as a consumer or even a professional model, they don't yet exist. There was one that came to market. It got problems. And I'm waiting for another one to come to market. And of course, I'll be offering it and using it. That until that such time, that's what 5G is. It was the basis for this millimeter wave. But then they said, hey, you know what? We need all that 3G and 4G stuff too, so that we can communicate even more. And that's what's happened. And now we're just exposed, all of us, to more of the energy because we have these towers located so close to one another and just about everywhere. They, they just put one up about a block and a half away. I went and stood in front of it and took an intake. Not in, and not in front, in front. I mean, in the parking lot across the street from the building, not right next to it. Yeah, yeah. And I'll show you the video. I was exposed to extreme radiation as if I was holding my phone, but I wasn't. One of my best tips for taking your skincare to another level, dermaplaning. I cannot stress how much of a power couple Nini skincare is with dermaplaning. So dermaplaning is when you take a little face razor blade all over your skin like once a month to get excess peach fuzz and dead skin off. You immediately look 10 years younger every time. No, your hair doesn't grow back darker or thicker. Yes, your skincare is able to penetrate better for more added benefits. First, double cleanse with a gentle hydrating and soothing face wash. I like Nimi's hydrating cleanser for this. Then pat your skin completely dry with a clean towel and gently dermaplane in short downward strokes. You're going to start to see your dead skin and hair pile up and then you can just wipe it on a napkin. And then once the dermaplaning is done, use Nimi's hydrating toner on a cotton round. Go in with Nimi's hyaluronic acid serum. And lastly, a generous amount of Nimi's hydrating face moisturizer. You are going to flip over the difference dermaplaning makes in your skin. This is so fantastic for anti-aging too, just to remove all that dead, dull skin. And I never need an upper lip wax anymore because I do this. Brunette girlies are the only ones who know. 
everyone who has made the switch to conservative and Christian-owned Nimi skincare is singing the praises. It is so important always, but especially during an election year, to not inadvertently fund the other side by giving your money to companies that will donate your money to politicians that you don't align with. Take the first step by switching to a completely conservative-owned skincare routine. Try Nimi skincare at nimiskincare.com. Get 10% off with code Alex Clark. That's Nimi, N-I-M-I, skincare.com with code Alex Clark for 10% off or find all this in the episode description. Mimi Skincare, modern skincare with timeless values. Ooh, okay, you brought up something that reminded me. You brought up the Nest security systems. And uh-huh. I think the biggest hesitancy people have with unplugging their Wi-Fi at night or turning it off is, well, what about my home security systems? What about my baby monitor that runs on Wi-Fi? What do people do about that? And that is a very valid point. And unfortunately, you can't turn off your Wi-Fi and keep your Nest working. There are some options and I had them here in this house. I hardwired my security system and I, I found a company to do it. An alarm company, uh, an audio visual company will hardwire your system. Do I have as many bells and whistles? No. Um, am I still able to go to the security panel and turn it on? Yes. Uh, so did I take out my Google doorbell? Yes. And I put in a hardwired doorbell because coming from that Google doorbell was the same amount of radiation that came from my phone. Mm. So uh, the, the, I'm so happy that you're talking about the baby monitors. I'm wishing, hoping, praying for an association with any baby monitor company to work with me in creating a wired baby monitor. Right now on my website, I take a camera that, that you can buy on Amazon and I show you how to hardwire it and you can even work with the electricity through your home. It's not perfect, but you can see the baby and hear the baby on your hardwired tablet. So it's an option. If you must have one of those wireless baby monitors in your baby's room, get it as far away from your baby as possible. Great advice. Great advice. Now, if someone was about to walk through their house today and they were going to start making changes to be less toxic, what are the very first things they should do today? Okay. First of all, never put that laptop on your lap, ever. With a shield, without a shield, do not put that laptop on your lap. Imagine the exposure that you're getting, not because it's sitting on your organs, because usually it sits on your thighs, but because that exposure goes right up to all of your reproductive organs, to your heart, to your thyroid. So please do not put your laptop on your lap. Um, Ditch the AirPods. I know. We have been preaching this. August, we have been preaching this all year. I have had every wellness guest I've had on, I've asked them that. And I've said, it's microwaving your brain, isn't it? And they've said, yes, stop. We are are doing wired headphones only. I'm so, that's just such music to my ears. Such a blessing. Uh, And air tube headsets are even better than wired headsets because in the event that some extraneous radiation crawls up those those, uh, wires, it stops with this tube of air. Okay, so any air tube headset will do this. I like mine because they're feminine and beautiful. Um, but, uh, and they feel so comfortable in my ear. They're nice and lightweight. But get some wired headsets for absolutely sure. Turn your Wi-Fi off at night or anytime you're not using it. Moms tell me their kids nap better than ever before when they do this. And back to those AirPods, I just got a letter from someone who told me, hey, what should I do about this? I've been wearing sleep buds, which are AirPods at night, both sleep buds. For two years, <gasps> and I developed I developed a uh, lump in my ear. No. I went to the doctor, and this is this is like the third time I've heard of something like this. Even my neighbor had this happen um, with AirPods, but this just came through like last week. And he he said he has a lump in his ear, and the crazy thing is, he said the the doctor said it checked out, it was okay. That every time a phone rings anywhere, his ear vibrates. And he oh, said, I got chills. The, right? He's the, what can I do? They said, I am so sorry. I would do everything I could to get healthy in every other way and hope that your body will overcome this for you. Because I've never heard of this. But you know, we're all different and we all have different weaknesses. But anyway, never put your phone in your bra. That's a very simple one. Uh, when you're carrying your phone, please try to carry it on airplane mode. 
watch my video about phantom airplane mode because there's a new uh, battery that put inside uh, your iPhone that will keep it on even when it's off. And there's also a function where even when you think your phone is on airplane, it isn't. So you have to go to settings. So just tricks like that. Just really make sure that you're exposed to as little as possible. If you know you've got a ringer nest, it might be a good time to unplug something that's right near the kids' bedrooms. Make sure that Wi-Fi is far away from sleeping areas and living areas for your family as possible. Um, and consider, consider if you have a Wi-Fi, considering hardwiring it. It's a it's a really simple fix. It's not hardwiring your house. That's huge. But a small thing to do is take the Wi-Fi, take that connection that comes out the Wi-Fi and connect it to something that splits the signal to five different things and just try using the computer and your phone with a wired connection. You know, just knowing my audience as well as I do, we, and we have a really open relationship yeah. where we're always talking about the episodes and all that. And I just know this is going to be one of the most shared episodes we've ever done. And all the women listening are going to be sending this to their husbands saying, honey, you've got to listen to this <laughs> podcast. We have a lot of changes that we have to make. So incredible advice. I, I believe life changing advice um, and extremely important when we're talking health and wellness. Yes, uh, you know, beauty products and food and all that, but also tech wellness. All of the things that you've talked about, all of the products that you've created to help with this, where do they find them? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Alex. At techwellness.com. And then also we have an Instagram tech wellness. We have Facebook tech wellness. And I'm going to send you links to the research that we talked about. So people Perfect. can just very easily show their husbands. Here's what it says right here. We will and put all of that in the show the notes research. of the episode. Read the show research. Notes. Even if you're looking for EMF protection, that like a harmonizer that says it's research, really look at that research. I think most of us are smart enough to know that two people in a research like a junior high experiment does not make for research. So uh, just I, I welcome people to read the research and just make the decision for themselves. August, thank you for coming on The Spillover. Thank you so much, Alex. Be well. Thank you for being understanding and allowing me to repost an interview this week. August is the sweetest. I can't recommend her website enough. I love my rose gold air tube headphones from her and my blue light blocker glasses. Next week, The Spillover is back with a brand new episode featuring a Christian author that you definitely know. Leave a five-star review. Tell me which guest has been your favorite so far. I'm Alex Clark, and this is The Spillover. Love you. Mean it. Bye. Bye.